All right, so I'm going to make the video that I was going to make earlier just to talk about some of the usability things uh, within the test. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on account here, and then I'm going to click on the color test on the left. And um, it loaded really quickly now, um, but I think it's loaded in cache. So when I did this before, it took a few seconds to load this iframe, and there wasn't anything loading in there saying, hey, uh, we're loading. Um, so it wasn't very clear that there was something loading. The other thing on this page, you've got the blue arrow way down at the bottom right. It would probably be good, if possible, to keep this. And I know the reason for that is when you click on the test, then this thing loads, and then the idea is click next. Um, but it might be good on this page to say, right above here, click on the test you would like to take, or something like that, because you're going to have multiple tests in here, I'm assuming, uh, based on our conversation. So. Um, something here that says click on the test you'd like to take so then click on that and then this loads but it would be nice if this arrow stayed over here um, and if the arrow is in gray or not even visible until this option comes up until they've clicked on this and then the arrow comes up um, it's just confusing because let me go back and show that color test do to do all right so it is loading quickly but that's because it preloaded before um, so it's confusing here because I'm like, okay, the Wagoner test, I want to take it. I'm going to click here. Okay, please select the test. Oh, okay, I'll go back and click on that. Oh, okay. It's just, um, it's a confusing step. So if this arrow didn't exist and there's a button, or not a button, but just some text here that says, please click on the test you'd like to take, because I know you guys are going to add tests, that would be helpful. Um, so they just click on that, or in some cases there may only be one test available. I'm not sure where all you're using this, but just please click on the test you'd like to take. would be good. And then that blue arrow, if it stays in the upper right the whole time, it's going to be a lot more clear. Um, it's just not very clear when it's down here, like what's going on with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click the next arrow. Um, and Jonathan... And one, two, three, four, five at whatever. Dot com, date of birth. We'll just go with this and go 2000. And then patient ID, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but this isn't very clear to me what patient ID should be um, as a user. So, you know, if there's a doctor's office helping somebody take this, are they going to get access to this patient ID later? What, what is the purpose of this patient ID? And maybe they know, but maybe they don't, uh, because there can be lots of different kinds of people coming in to take this test. So it might be useful to have a little question mark with a tooltip. Um, this is an identifying piece of information that XYZ. Okay, so then I've got to select a gender and test condition. That's all fine. Um, and then interesting so this other box pops up but do I have to complete it I'm not sure um, maybe this is just so that we keep an eye on what their condition is and maybe this is a notes field I'm not sure what this box is so maybe a little tip underneath that says uh, please include some details about this patient or what information this patient just whatever that box is for I'm not 100% on what that box is for um, okay so then we'll go ahead and click next and after I click next here, oh, field is required, please be sure to check. Um, I would say field is required, otherwise please select pronounced glare or minimal glare or something. Um, but please be sure to check is kind of ambiguous. Um, okay, so we'll go to minimal glare, go ahead and hit the next button here. All right, so this is really, really helpful. Please wait while the test is being configured. Uh, with the Rubik's Cube, that's great, this messaging. Um, so this actually loaded pretty quickly this time. I'd already started loading it once before making this video, so um, then I realized, oh, I should go back in. But it did seem to take a minute to load. I'm also just noticing that it looks like these your images have gotten a little pixelated. I'm not sure why um, or if it's important to have that there um, or if you have a larger version of your logo or whatever. Um, so I'm reading this text for the first time might be good to actually kind of break this out into some bullet points um, or you know just like left and right text and break it out a little bit it's just very hard to read all in this one paragraph um, and maybe people will know and maybe I just don't but again our over arrow has moved so that it's down at the bottom of the page so this should pretty much live in the same place would be ideal um, on each one of the pages if possible 
All right, so then we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll get the Rubik's Cube. Please maximize your window to view the test properly. We can't maximize the window any further. Um, this is, you know, I mean, I can blow up the screen, but there's um, that's kind of a confusing message for us to have here um, if we want to keep them inside of the context of solutions in low vision. I did try... Uh, sizing down the window and I do see it's built to be mobile friendly or it has been built to be responsive so I'm confused about the messaging saying you know, please maximize to view the, the test properly because it is actually built to be responsive um, here so I'm not sure why that messaging exists there please maximize your window but it's a confusing thing to get to that page because it really is maximized um, at that point so again the arrow is down at the bottom of the page um, kind of moved so uh, we got the Rubik's Cube loading that's great this is chopped off though um, and I'm not sure if it's because we're loading in a frame or or what but um, I don't envision us making the frame bigger uh, it's it's pretty much 100% of the content area of the page so let me go back here just to show you that is the content area of our site so um, for whatever that's worth, that's pretty much the content area we have available and probably the content area a lot of sites will have available. We're looking at a huge screen here. Um, you're looking at one third of my screen, basically. Um, so, but this is not going to be, most people's computers are going to be about this size. So anyway, that message was kind of confusing. All right, so we've got the arrow down at the bottom. Um, and I see a 16... But then I have to scroll down here to this. And then I see a 24. But it disappeared so fast. And then I have to scroll down here and go, okay, so 7, scroll down here, guessing 28. But it's gone, you know. Um, so that's really fast. But this even just giving me time to scroll, I'm not sure if it's disappearing because... I, I think that was 74. If it's disappearing because I sh didn't scroll fast enough or what. So it'd be really help. And now the next one's popped up. Did I not go fast enough? Now I'm really confused and frustrated as a test taker because it's just like popping things up at me. Um, so maybe it, it waits to go to the next slide until I've actually had a chance to... Yeah, it's weird. I uh, had a chance to click the over arrow. It seems like it's going by too fast. Like, um, for someone who's taking this test for the first time or administering this test for the first time, they're really not... I just clicked the over arrow, but it... Yeah. Um, so, it's confusing a little bit. There's just some confusing messaging inside of here um, while I'm doing this. I think that's an 8... I really did not have long enough to look at that to even know. Um, so, yeah, we definitely need to slow down the time on this. I mean, I'm, I think I'm pretty with it. <laughs> Maybe I'm not, but the number's gone before I can even scroll down and click on the button. So if that button can be up here, that would help this issue a lot. Um, even just the time that it takes to scroll down to go to the next one, and then the next one's just loading, and did I get it? Did I not get it? I'm not sure. It's already loaded the next one. I can see how this would be extremely frustrating for elderly people. Um, so anyway, for whatever that's worth. Okay. So now you get to section two. Um, okay. Well, anyway, I think you get the idea. There's just a few things in there that are the usability kinds of issues that um, I don't know why it's telling me to make it full screen because this is about as full screen as it's ever going to get for most people. And it also is responsive. So, um, oh, I see. Uh, yeah, so this is a, um, a deal with your mobile responsiveness. Um, the why the section two is being chopped off is actually because we've got the screen set too big uh, for the design. So this is a floating layer on top of the image behind it, um, but it needs to adjust accordingly for screen size. So um, here's another example of that. Two, this looks okay, actually, it's not too bad. But probably the two should be forced to live inside of here, and section should be forced to live inside of its container um, so that it doesn't give that effect. Okay, um, hopefully those things are some good feedback, helpful feedback, and um, I think it's loading a whole lot better than it was when we first looked at it, so that is awesome. Um, and some of these other kinds of issues, if we can get those cleared up, that would be awesome. Um, or not cleared up, they're not like big issues, I guess, but just some of the usability things, I think that would help a lot. Um, 
the biggest thing being putting the over button in a consistent place over here on the right hand side and maybe it doesn't even show up until you've done the previous action so it the the arrow doesn't show up on any of those color slide um, pages until you've actually typed in a number or something like that um, so that it's actually triggering based on some level of interaction so that the number or the arrow shows up but again having the arrow in a consistent place okay long video sorry about that hopefully this makes sense and let me know if you have any questions thank you